just to make, try to be as respectful as I can with all your time. I appreciate uh, all of you coming. Um, this is the first time in three years that we have been uh, back in person, uh, but it is a great opportunity to do this in person uh, because we actually have um, five different universities here this evening. Uh, so at the conclusion of everything, if you have questions for those specific colleges on their policies or anything, classes, things like that, you'll be able to go and talk to them. And then also um, there are tables set up over here uh, at the end where the teachers that teach our classes here in-house with um, different universities, they'll be here if you have any questions specific for them, okay? Uh, so I'm Liz Smith. I think most of you know me, but I am the school counselor at the high school, um, just in case we have any junior high parents in here tonight. Uh, so um, we are required to have this meeting every year for students. Every year that they're going to participate in College Credit Plus, they do need to be here. Um, they are constantly changing legislation for College Credit Plus, and so every year we are required to tell you the new rules or any the rules for College Credit Plus, so that's why you're here tonight. Uh, and every year they have to turn in an intent form. I'm probably going to mention that multiple times. It is the last paper in your packet. It is super important. Um, and so when I go over that, um, the 10 times I'm gonna say it so you don't forget, um, that paper, just so you know, before we get started, if you hear nothing else, it is due every year. Every year they wanna do College Credit Plus. So if your child is doing College Credit Plus this year, they still have to turn it in again. It's due April 1st. You got a lot of time. If you're anything like me, turn it in tonight, okay? So you don't forget. I have pens up here. If you don't have a pen, just grab it, throw it up here on the table. Uh, so it says that you're signing off on that, saying you did participate in this night, learning about College Credit Plus, that you want your child to participate in College Credit Plus. Here's the thing, you guys. If you turn it in and your child or you change your mind about them taking College Credit Plus, that is perfectly fine, okay? But if you don't turn it in by April 1st, then they can't take it. So if you're thinking about it in the back of your mind, just turn it in so that they have the opportunity and you have time to think about it and change your mind. I, I have a lot of students um, who do that and then they, they say, well, I'm really busy in the fall, so I turned it in with the intent to take a spring class. And so then I'll meet with them to schedule their spring classes. Okay, so we'll go ahead and get started. So for College Credit Plus, any student that meets the eligibility guidelines 7 through 12 is eligible. That doesn't mean they should take it, um, but they can take it. So anyone 7 through 12, uh, and they have to be either a 3.0 grade point average with a full year of high school courses. So PE and algebra in eighth grade does not count. <coughs> um, students that are freshmen right now, that does not count. So those students that don't meet that requirement, they have to take a college placement test. So that's either what's called an AccuPlacer, uh, and that it has to be taken at, if they wanna take, let's say, classes from Bluffton University and the University of Finley, they would have to take an active placer at both Finley and Bluffton in order to qualify. So if you don't want that to be the case, you want your students to take one test and be done, then you want them to take the ACT or the SAT, okay? And then they have to get specific scores to qualify uh, for that to be deemed college ready, okay? And then first time it's mentioned, well, technically, I guess second time, that intent form is due April 1st, okay? So um, there are some perks uh, to um, College Credit Plus, and the biggest thing is that you don't have to pay for the tuition and the books. However, there is some cost to it. Um, as long as they pass the class, that is the case. I will definitely say, since I've been here, when I first started seven years ago, there were 40 students in College Credit Plus. There is now 168 students in College Credit Plus. That doesn't mean that 168 kids should be in it. I really need you to think about if your child is ready. Um, this is the first time I've gotten grades that are not great, okay? And these stick with them. This is on a college transcript, and this is on their high school transcript. So this affects them getting into the universities. This affects them 
with scholarships in the long run too. So just please make sure, and you know your child better than anybody, if they are truly ready. If they fail the course, they are you are responsible to pay the cost of that class back in the books. So that's that is where the cost comes in. Also, if there's any transportation, uh, some of our students do drive to the universities to take classes, uh, and so you're responsible for getting them there. Um, so there's a couple different options for CCP classes. You can either take them with us or through the university. Uh, and so on the intent form, I have it just as option one and option two. Option one means you want to take it from the universities uh, and or whether that be online or in person. And option two is you're going to take some classes here at the high school. Sometimes, so like we have um, some math classes with roads. So I'll have students who will put option one and two on that line because they want to take classes with them and they want to take classes here at the high school. So courses taught through the University of Finley. We have college writing one for seniors. We have intro to literature for juniors. And then new this year, so I have a parent just come through and they're like, well, I don't know, I have a freshman this year. New this year, that sophomore history has two classes that they get credit for. So then they will finish their uh, American history class with six college credits. So first semester, second semester, which is amazing, okay? Uh, so those are the options through the University of Finley here at the high school. And then as far as uh, road state classes, I mentioned we have math. So we have calculus one, and then we have advanced math where the students have to take college algebra first semester and trigonometry second semester. And so those are worth a total, if, they, if students take all three of those classes, they finish with 12 math, college math classes, uh, credits, which is amazing. Uh, so a lot of opportunities that we have here. Also one of the um, great things about that college algebra and trigonometry, we've had calculus for years, uh, but they had to have a 27 on the math ACT. Um, that is pretty difficult. Uh, so we, had, we would have a, only a handful of students that were eligible to take it. But by offering these classes, and as long as they, they pass it um, with a C or better, they can move on into calculus their senior year, which is awesome. All right, so how do you enroll? First of all, you're here. So this is the first step, okay? And then you're going to um, both sign that intent to participate form. Uh, you're going to turn it in to me um, in the guidance office by April 1st. Then you need to complete one of the required placement tests, whether that be the ACT, the SAT, or the Accuplacer. And then students um, apply to the college of their choice um, for acceptance in the CCP, and you need to notify me. The reason you need to stop in the guidance office and notify either me or Mary Hofer is because we will mark that down so we know for sure which colleges you need us to send those transcripts to, especially if you're giving us the forms now. Um, you could end up putting OSU, uh, ONU, and Finley down, but then after you think about it, you're like, oh, well, we're only going to apply to Finley. So then I just need to know that, right? So I know to send the transcript for your student. Uh, because we have that sophomore history class where a lot of those freshmen don't have a full year of, um, of uh, uh, grade point average yet, sorry. <laughs> Uh, we actually uh, scheduled with Rebecca Hillman, who's here from um, Finley. She will come in in the spring and test any of those um, freshmen that are going to be sophomores that don't meet that requirement. Also, any um, juniors uh, or, um, that, or sophomores that may need it for those English classes. But she will test them um, to make sure that they can get into that class. Okay? Uh, so, um, I like to put this up here because uh, these are our, um, we, we actually have about nine colleges that students take classes from, um, but these are our most common. And so when um, it comes to enrolling, uh, this is like, I'm telling you what you need to do, uh, but you need to know the deadlines for each one of the universities and their procedures and, and help your student apply. Um, that will be, you know, and making sure you meet their deadlines, okay? So, um, Bluffton University, their deadline is May 1st for applying. 
Uh, Finley is June 1st. Rhodes State is August 1st. Ohio Northern is May 1st. OSU is May 1st. And BG is May 15th. Um, so I just put those in there just so you can kind of have those in the back of your mind. The other thing that will happen is once you're a student, um, we will do like scheduling, picking classes for next year for high school. I'll meet with them in February like I always do. Um, and then when it comes time, once we get their schedules built, I will then have a meeting with them in May. Um, it's usually the last two weeks of school. Um, every student that wants to take CCP for the following spring or fall will have to meet with me. We'll look at their high school schedule. Uh, we will look at what classes are available at the universities, and then we will pick their classes. Um, so that is something we have to do every semester. Um, and I'm gonna get to that reason here shortly, uh, but it's because um, they can only have a, a maximum <coughs> of 30 total hours every year uh, for CCP. If you go above that, you're, you're responsible for the full cost of the class that takes you over. So if it's only one hour, but you know, let's say you had 29 hours and you took a three credit hour class, you're just, you don't get one hour discount. You have to pay for that full class. So that's why I keep an eye on that for your child. And it's very, very important that they have that conversation with me. Um, the other thing that we talk about in that meeting is um, if there's any classes that they can take at a university that might replace a required class that they have during their high school. Um, we have a lot of students do that, but that needs to be a conversation so I can look at the curriculum and make sure that's a student a class we've never had that with before. So here's the requirements. Uh, and like, so that um, English, those two English courses that we, I told you about from Finley, those um, do count for the English 11 and only English 12 credit. Uh, that American history, those count for that American history credit. Uh, we have that um, advanced math, that's that trigonometry um, and college algebra, and then calculus is a fifth math. Um, so that one's not on there because it's just required that your student have four maths to graduate. Um, we do have some students that will take sociology uh, because then it's a good elective to take. Um, so we do have some students that will take that because it also replaces the class they need, things like that. All right. So um, when your student signs up for classes, if they want to replace something at the high school, they also have to be thinking about the hours that it's worth. So anything that's worth five, four, or three credits converts to one high school credit. Anything that's two credits at the college is only 0.667. So if you're wanting to take, let's say, uh, a government class, and it's only worth two credit hours at the college, it will not substitute in for your government because it's not worth a full one credit. It doesn't transfer in as enough value. Um, and there's very few that are actually one credit at the college, but if it is, it comes in as 0.33. All right, so this was a rule some of you might be familiar with, but this went into place about three years ago. Um, the Ohio Department of Higher Education said, that students that take college credit plus classes have to take 15 hours of level one coursework. And then after that, they can um, enroll in level two coursework. Um, it's not always uh, easy to find on college websites. Uh, so sometimes I have to ask the colleges, is this level one, is this level two, before I help your child sign up for that so they don't get in, try to get into something that they don't have uh, the ability to take yet. So going to the 30 hour rule, um, I, I mentioned this a little bit ago, but every year they can only take a total of 30 hours combination of high school and college classes. Uh, we require that our students always have six classes. That can be high school and college together, but it's still, they have to always have six classes. So when we look at this, one high school credit is three semester hours. Half of high school credit is one and a half semester hours. So I have this worksheet that I created. I put it in the packet. I, this is what I do with every student. And I think it just really helps being able to see what these classes, like how does that, what does that mean? So let's say that a student's taking English, math, science, and social studies with us. Okay, just the, the core classes. Those are all worth a credit. Well, 
I always tell my students, like, we have the, the best and the brightest students, and the ones that are taking CCP, they're probably really good at math too. And so I'm like, hey, if you're adding, uh, if you're if you're trying to like work with fractions, you got to have like terms, right? So it's kind of the same thing along the lines with this. High school credits and college credits are not like terms, okay? So you have to take every high school class credit and multiply it by three in order to subtract it from the 30 and tell your student then this is how many hours you have left for college. So if they had four classes that are worth an hour apiece, that's 12 hours subtracted from the 30, your student can take 18 semester hours between semester one and semester two for college. That's what they have available. And so again, this is why it's so very important um, that I meet one-on-one -on -one with all of your students every semester to keep track of this so that you don't get a surprise, oh, hey, you're gonna have to pay for that class because I know that's not why all of you are sitting here right now. Um, potential concerns, these are college classes. Um, I know you're putting your, your child in this class because you want them to be challenged, um, but that also needs to be something that you keep in mind. Um, high school and college transcripts, I mentioned that, you know, this doesn't go away. Um, once they start taking these college classes, this is with you forever. I know when I've gone back to school, they're still asking for all of my transcripts. When I get my jobs, they're asking for all of my transcripts. So just make sure um, that you, your student is prepared for that. Um, how it might affect scholarships, awards, um, and honors uh, if they would um, lower their GPA. Um, failed courses, um, obviously the cost. If you're substituting something for graduation, that could affect your ability to graduate. Uh, scheduling, you do have to work with me to make sure that it works in your schedule. I've had some students before who will be like, well, I wanna, I'm gonna take this class and whatever it is, I don't know, say uh, calculus um, at a university. I'm like, that's great, but that's the only time that your band is offered. So what do you want to do? There are times that students have to make that compromise. If they want, they might have to give up something in order to take the class, or they don't want to give it up. Um, but they need to meet with me so we know exactly where their schedule looks like before they try to schedule at the college. Um, social issues. I mean, there are times that you know, you're, these are college students. Your, your students will be interacting with them. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, weather, I, this was funny, we just had a representative from Bowling Green in the other day telling the students, you know what you're not going to have in college? A snow day. Uh, so um, that's something to keep in mind. And then traveling to get there, especially in the fall or the snow days. All right, so next steps. Because of um, maturity level, uh, being an issue um, in colleges uh, and, and high school students entering into those classes, the colleges are now required by the Ohio Department of Higher Education to provide, and, and you have to sign off um, on a mature content form. Some of those, that's you understanding that your student will be asked to read things that you might not agree with. They will be a part of discussion posts that you might not agree with but this is a college class. So you are understanding that that will take place. Uh, so that is sometimes embedded in their application. Sometimes it's a separate paper. Uh, communication, uh, courses at the university. This again, I, I know I already mentioned this, it's just because this stuff's really important. Make sure you're communicating with me, your schedule and what that looks like if travel is necessary. Scheduling substituting courses, and then the letter of intent by April 1st. I'm sure if I have any questions, I will be down here at the end of the presentation. Uh, I'm going to call up, um, I'm going to go through a few more slides on the colleges, and then I'm going to call up the colleges, uh, and then the teachers, I can see them in the back here, they'll fill in um, at these tables. Uh, so uh, Miss Knowlton, she's um, teaching our English uh, 11 class, or, um, and then College writing, that's Miss Erford, history classes, 
That's Ms. Rackley. And then um, Mrs. Skilleter had a uh, death in her family, so unfortunately she's not here tonight. Um, but if you have any questions, you can reach out to her um, via email, okay? So first, uh, BG, um, this is on the slides. These slides will go up on my website too. So um, if you need to contact them um, about your CCP, um, there's the information up there. Uh, Ohio Northern, um, the, they have some information in here about their classes. So Monday, Wednesday, Friday, uh, 50 minute classes, Tuesday, Thursday, 75 minutes. And I, I can tell you students that are taking those classes, I think we have about five, something like that, six out of my room right now. And that takes some some uh, time out of their schedules. A lot of times we uh, will have just seniors do that because they're the, the ones that have that much room in their schedule to be able to allow for a 75 minute period um, on Tuesdays and Thursdays plus drive time there and back. Um, so um, Brenda Wade Brackman is here from Ohio Northern. And so if you have questions for her about classes, um, she's right over there. Road State, Gavin, yeah, do you want to come on up here? So good afternoon. My name is Gavin Schneider. Um, but I am new at Road State College in July. And I'm going to cover, I'm actually going to skip through our pathways. If you have questions about those, come back and see. Um, I'm actually going to skip the cooler part of the state, which is transfer 36. So how this works, this is good for the state, uh, a few years, I think it's been around about two or three. So basically how this works is that if you take 12 general education classes at a CCG, and want to transfer them from a two-year to a four-year, two-year to a two-year, a four-year to a four-year, you can do that in a block. So kind of an example, I graduated High school was not that long ago, it took CCP at Rhodes. I actually had transfer 36 done before it was a thing. And then when I transferred on to Bowling Green State University, they only took 11 of those 12 classes, so I had to make up for it. Now it is in legislature that if you have those classes done and they are part of the transfer module, a public university cannot go through and say, we will not take this, but we will take this. They have to take that as a block. And if you guys have any other questions about that, you can come back. I'm in the way back corner. Um, and we also have the transfer model courses, or I'm sorry, the TAC courses. So TAC courses, some of them are part of the transfer model and some are not. So how this works is, say, Ohio State main campus will take our composition of literature. So it is the same class for both universities and it transfers pretty late. Well. The only difference when that makes is two year to four year in public to private. That sometimes can be questionable, but any grad here tonight will be able to help you with that in the future. That goes for three of us. And then there's our pathway. So if you guys are interested in that, just come back and see me tonight. We have Emma Morris here um, from Ohio State University. Uh, we have students, um, they have what's called the Academy Program. Um, that's where they call their CCP. So if you want to apply for it, if you're looking for it, you're like, I've been all over Ohio State's website and I can't find CCP it's because they call it the Academy Program. So um, we do have students that take classes from them, um, and some of them are taught by professors uh, at uh, main campus. So that is a great opportunity as well. Uh, we have Rebecca Holman here from University of Finley. Um, we have a ton of students. Um, <laughs> so uh, with Rebecca, when we schedule classes, um, it, every college also schedules classes different. So our students meet with me. Uh, it's a, a completely different process across the board. Uh, but she and I, I just do a spreadsheet. Uh, and I email about 70 students' names to her. She puts them in classes. They get emails from her. It works pretty nice. So that one. Uh, but they require two forms. Uh, and so when I schedule your students in February for their high school classes for next year, if they are taking CCP or Finley, or if they put those classes down with Mr. Ragley, I'll say, okay, come back to me and use two papers too, uh, because they will be needed uh, for them. And I'll make sure they have their tent loaded. Okay. And then we have Brown Ferris here from Bluffton University. 
uh, is pretty nice. The students can just walk down there, um, take their classes. Uh, they do also uh, an in-person orientation um, in August to get started. And God yeah, reminded me of this one thinking about here. So I get this a lot, um, and I understand as a parent myself um, that college is very expensive. And we're all here, again, because we want this to be paid for for our students who are here at start. So when I have students that meet with me, they'll say, well, what classes should I take? Unless your child can sit right in front of me and tell me exactly what university they're going to and what major they're going to be in, I can't promise that it's going to count towards their major. They will not lose the credit, right? That's in the Ohio transfer model. But when you go to college, you have a checklist of classes that you need for your major, and it may not fit in that bucket. So they can just graduate with an extra credits. One thing it'll help them do, they will look at the schedule before um, their, uh, you know, other freshmen in college when they're scheduling. But what I try to do to help them give them the best chance is to vary the classes that they take. So there's a good chance that you're going to have to take a math class in college. You're going to have to take an English class. You're going to have to take something from the humanities department. You probably are going to have to take a history class, right? But there's some majors that don't need those. So we really try to do our best in advising them because it's usually just the, I have very few seniors that can sit in front of me in May before in the other junior year, um, and even August in May, because this is definitely the school. Some of them will have a three, four, or five schools near now, but by the second semester, they're like, okay, I'm not going to Ohio State University, I'm going to um, pre med, biology, and here's my courses that I need to take, what will transfer? And I will work with them with their registrar, whatever we need to, to try to figure it out. Another website I will tell you is transferology.com. A lot of the colleges will recommend that to you. You can take and create an account for your student. Um, and it's really cool. You take the classes, um, the course numbers of the universities, and you put in the semesters um, that they took it, whether it's like spring of 23 or fall of 24, you plug that in, and then it'll tell you what colleges it matches um, for classes. So then you'll know, okay, is that like um, writing some of our class that my child took in Ohio Northern? What does that look like if they go to Ohio State? And that'll help you figure that out later. Okay? Right, so you guys, I kind of, Mr. Rack, I put y'all in there. And then Ms. Arthur at the next table, and then Mrs. Milton. Um, if you guys have any questions for them, or if you guys even want to make your way down here where there's a little more room, um, and then again, the colleges are here. Uh, so if you have specific questions for them, those of you that want to turn in your intent form to me, that would be great. Come on down if you have any questions. I really appreciate you all coming out.